Just wait a second while more people log on. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm City Councilor Paula Fletcher, and I'm here today with MPP Peter Tabins, Philip Kosif from the Broadview Danforth BIA, Mark Kaluski, Chair of the Ottawa Coalition of BIAs, and also the Chair of the Vanier BIA, and Marty Williams, the Executive Director of the Downtown Guelph BIA. We're here today to present the third survey that was developed by the Broadview Danforth BIA and shared through the Toronto Area of Business Improvement Areas, the Toronto office. And as well, this time it went out to other cities in Ontario. So our view will be Ontario wide today on the results of the survey. We know, and we've said this before, that Main Street uh, is such an important street all across Ontario. And small businesses are the backbone of our main streets. Here in Ontario with 81 BIAs, the employ 300,000 people. Uh, 10, 20 or 30% failure rate, 30% failure rate is a 90,000 person unemployment rate in the city of Toronto. And for small business owners and small businesses that fail, we know that they have already plowed in their savings taken out mortgages to try to pay the rent, and sometimes they've even lost their businesses. So many feel that we're not really in this together when it comes to small business. And that's why we're here today with Peter Tabins, MPP, an advocate like me for our small businesses and our main streets in Toronto Danforth across the city. And of course, Peter as a provincial politician for across Ontario. Would you like to address the issue, please, of a freeze on commercial evictions and how successful that is working out in three other provinces? Peter. Thanks very much, Paula, and good morning, everyone. Really, this is the time for the Premier of Ontario to act. If he had started at the beginning of this crisis, brought in a commercial rent subsidy, brought in a moratorium on commercial evictions, we'd be in much better shape than we are now but the reality is we're steadily seeing loss of businesses and eviction of businesses. We've seen that the federal provincial commercial rent supplement program has not been successful. People know that 16,000 out of 1.2 million Canadian businesses have now been signed on to this program. Not enough. It's not enough to save the businesses in this province, in, in any of our cities. We also know that from the survey you'll be hearing today, that it isn't just those large across Canada numbers that are worrying, distressing, right here in Ontario are a huge problem. And it's clear now with New Brunswick and Nova Scotia having brought in eviction moratoriums, British Columbia just in the last few days having done the same, and now this morning the report that Alberta is considering bringing in a moratorium on commercial evictions, that this is an idea and an action that has been growing across this country. Right here in Ontario, we've heard the Premier regularly talk about quote unquote greedy landlords, about quote unquote landlords playing hardball, but he hasn't actually acted. Talk is really cheap, but none of the businesses in this province can survive solely on the basis of tough talk. What they need is the Premier to step in, bring up bring forward uh, a moratorium on commercial evictions and give the operating room to get things sorted out and get back on their feet. Premier, step up, act, don't just talk. And with that, Paula, I turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Peter. And I know you've been calling for this for a while. And uh, thank you for your advocacy for small business in our neighborhood and across the province. Uh, Philip Kosev, you're the uh, treasurer of the Broadview Danforth BIA. This is the sur third survey that this BIA has undertaken. And you have some new results for us about 
CECRA and also what's going to happen to June rent. Great. Uh, thank you, July Paula. Rent. Yeah, thank you. July coming up. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Paula and Peter, for, for your continued support through all of this. And again, to all of our businesses and, and landlords who participated, we know that all of you are tired and you continue to give us the feedback and the tools that we need to, to advocate for you. Um, it's it's been uh, three months as you said this is now the third third survey we've done it was it's been almost three months when i was first invited to to speak on cp24 here locally about what we were seeing early on in the pandemic with our small business community and and i'm a little bit saddened that we're still sitting here almost three months later and we're asking for two of the very same things and you know as peter mentioned it's a moratorium on evictions and we need more stable rent relief for small businesses. In this uh, most recent survey that we did, uh, we, we, we expanded it to the Ottawa and Guelph areas. And the results show that this isn't uh, just a big city or Toronto issue. This is something that all businesses are feeling across the province uh, with the results being virtually the same. So we found that 72% of businesses uh, did not make all of June's rent. And these numbers uh, keep growing from our last two surveys. In June, um, sorry, in, in May, that was 63%. And back in April, it was 50%. So these numbers are growing exponentially. And then 78% of businesses are feeling that they will not make all of uh, July's rent. And I think something to, you know, to think back on our first survey in April, 61% of businesses at that time had indicated they would need to close down for good within three months or and 76% within five months. Well, July is around the corner and that's when we start to hit that three month, uh, you know, really that three month mark. And so uh, a little bit, a little bit, um, you know, nervous for our, our business members who are, are fearing uh, closure. 61% uh, of businesses indicated that their landlord has not applied for the rent assistance program. Landlords overwhelmingly are finding the process cumbersome. It's unclear. The application portal is, is failing. Um, there's very little resources for them to get answers. Uh, they're resistant to, you know, showing, you know, financial or other uh, documentation that's required in the process. Uh, and overall, there just isn't motivation for a landlord to apply, to apply, and they would rather defer rent than, you know, and, and ensure that they're getting 100% of rent than to give up 25% uh, of the gross rents uh, for, for three months. Which, you know, we also need to keep in mind that many of our landlords on our small uh, main streets are also small business owners themselves. So they're being asked to, you know, to give up on their bottom line. And a lot of these landlords are not big major corporations. They're not the trust, uh, you know, um, corporations that have uh, own, own the real estate. And when they're giving up 25% of their TMI, as well as their base rent, in some cases, that's hitting upwards of 50%. Of um, because particularly in Toronto, where there are neighborhoods where our commercial rent, uh, commercial real estate taxes are actually uh, quite high. Um, but throughout, you know, in Toronto specifically, throughout the last few weeks, we've continued to see, you know, on a, on a daily basis, we're seeing uh, more lockouts, we're seeing businesses make the difficult decision to close down because their debt is just continuing to pile up. And even if they get back into business next month, they're just fearing that there, there isn't enough room to get out of the debt that they, they need uh, to pay. And, and they're becoming devastated. They're losing hope. And this is where we really need that provincial moratorium on commercial evictions. We need secret to be, or, or secret needs to be mandatory. Um, or as other provinces have done, and I think BC is the one that did it, make it a moratorium on evictions for landlords who would otherwise qualify for the program but are choosing not to. At the end of the day, too, the program itself, we've heard from a number of landlords and tenants that the criteria is just too weak. The 70% revenue loss is very high, so a number of businesses are not qualifying for that. Yet a number of our uh, business businesses who replied indicated that even 30 and 40 percent revenue losses is, is putting them underwater. So that 70 percent threshold is eliminating a number of people. 
thank you, Paula. That's that's the summary of our survey this time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Philip. And I'm going to go now to Marty Williams. And Marty, you are the executive director of the Downtown Guelph BIA. So we've gone from big city Main Street to smaller city Main Street. Can you tell us if the problems are the same or there's a vast difference? I think the survey shows that uh, we're, we have remarkable similarities. Uh, Main Streets in, in downtown historic shopping districts across Ontario are, are facing the same issues, the same problems, finding the same frustrations uh, that they're finding in Toronto and Ottawa. And this survey certainly shows that. I am also the vice president of the Ontario BIA Association, and we're on calls twice a week, hearing from people in, in villages, towns, problems, and the result is the same. Um, we are uh, as frustrated with this, with the program, uh, as anybody in, in big cities. And Main Street businesses, sole proprietors, have more in common with each other, no matter where they are in this province, than uh, than they do with the um, the big box and the malls and other large corporate entities. We also always want to remind ourselves that as business improvement areas, we represent both the landlord and the tenant. And in many many cases, these greedy landlords that the premier may speak of are small business people and. Their, their business is to rent out commercial property to other entrepreneurs. So let's not demonize people. Let's get people the help they need. Let's put this moratorium in place. I do I want to have a shout out to our MPP from Guelph, Mike Schreiner, who's the leader of the Green Party, the one and only Green in, in the ledge. And uh, he's been doing the same thing, standing shoulder to shoulder with people uh, of all parties who are calling on this, uh, this to happen. We just need some leadership on this issue. Thank you very much, Marty. And next, uh, Mark Kaluski, you're the chair of the Ottawa Coalition of BIAs, and you also chair the Vanier BIA, and you are a landlord. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about how uh, you're experiencing the crisis of small business in Ottawa, the survey results, and touch on the some of the difficulties in uh, accessing the uh, CECRE. Thank you very much. Okay, how much time do we have here? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so from an Ottawa perspective, um, you know, as with, as you said, everywhere, rent is the number one fixed cost. So, um, mo for most businesses, uh, you'll see that until they get to sort of the 28th or 29th of the month, they're not even making any money for themselves. You know, they, it takes that much time through the month to start, pay, you know, pay off all these fixed costs. So, any drop in revenue obviously has such a huge impact on their ability to uh, to, to pay the rent. So uh, we're we're glad to see that there's some program, but of course there's the, um, the disappointment that it's not being taken up widely. Um, the biggest concern, or of the, all the concerns, is that is the uncertainty. We don't know how long this is going to last. This could go on for for months and months and months. So to be fair to, to landlords, uh, as Marty's alluding to as well, is we don't know if this is a three month problem. Or if this program needs to be extended for another year, you know who who knows how long. So there's there are a lot of unknowns out there, and that's part of what what exacerbates all these issues and these problems for both the tenant and for the landlord. Um, another big big issue we have is the land uh, the tenants who put personal guarantees to get to to secure these leases. And once you have a personal guarantee, then you're you you probably haven't slept a wink of sleep in the last three months, knowing that you're on the all this rent. Um, regardless of pandemic. So uh, this program was well-intentioned. Uh, I think they, they thought by giving the money directly to the landlords, uh, it would help the whole process. But obviously there's some gaps in how the, the program was, was implemented. Um, you know, mostly in that it's, it's, it's becomes arbitrary. If you're land, if you are someone, a tenant whose landlord has decided to apply for the program, then all of a sudden your rent is 25%. If you're, if you're not, then your rent is a hundred percent. And, and it's that that sense of arbit, you know, who knows why, what compels someone to apply or not apply, uh, has an impact on your your ability to to you know your financial <laughs> solvency. Um, so I, I do think the program can be fixed, and there's some suggestions here, and I think they're great suggestions. I think the BC model is one to look at. 
um, the, the moratorium definitely compels landlords to, you know, can compel a landlord to go back and look at the program again and, and have some ability to recoup some rent and gives the tenants a bit more power in the relationship. Um, so as you mentioned, yes, I am a small uh, landlord. I have a single tenant. Um, I've been in contact with them ever since day one. Obviously, no one chose this. Uh, you know, no, nobody chose this pandemic and chose to be closed for three months. So I've been, uh, as much as I can, accommodating, uh, you know, having my own financial pressures. But I have applied for the SECRA program. Um, as with all uh, online programs, I had my seri series of challenges. And maybe I'm unique and maybe I'm not. But I, it took me three or four days before I was able to get past uh, the first page of it to get a, a username and password going. And that there are frustrations with with the, you know, the number of uh, people applying at the same time and the availability of tech support and all that. So uh, frustrations all around. Once I got through, obviously they, they've tried their best to, to make it as easy a process as possible. Uh, there are some onerous parts to it uh, where you have to fill out forms and get Adobe signatures and that. And even though I'm, I'm pretty computer savvy, I know there are a lot of people out there who are gonna have issues with that. So. Uh, I guess my recommendation is to to try to keep have more human beings staffing the lines to help people through the uh, application process. Um, but I'm hopeful that this is more a question of some tinkering that will help it make it make it more successful than a whole reframe of the project uh, pro, uh, program. And just to give you one more one final little tidbit, uh, if anyone knows Ottawa, Orleans is is a, a major suburb in the east end of Ottawa. And their BIA uh, reported that uh, through all their businesses, there was one application uh, to the SECRA program to the point where they are M their MP and their MPP both wrote a personal letter of thanks for applying for it. So obviously there's something failing in this program. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna call on you MPP Tabins. What would it take for the provincial government to enact a freeze on commercial evictions? Well, simply passage of a piece of legislation, just as they've done in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, very straightforward, simple piece of legislation. And frankly, if the premier was willing to do it, I think he would have all party support immediately. I think he could pass it this weekend if he announced this afternoon that he was going to do it. Uh, it is not a long, complex, difficult process. I took a look at the Nova Scotia legislation I'm sure that they would be happy if we borrowed their wording and modified it slightly for our province. Uh, this is not a tough one. What it does require though, is a willingness to actually take it on. Thank you. I'm just gonna open this up now for any questions uh, to all the participants here, the attendees today at this media conference. Thank you. Uh, here's one question, Philip. It is concerning um, why a commercial landlord might be willing to evict a tenant uh, rather than apply for SECRA. Right. What's uh, the situation well, and with commercial landlords? Yeah, and so we've seen, you know, in, in a number of cases, I think there's about 30% when we look at the, you know, the survey who are not planning to apply for the program, you know, regardless. And we get the question a lot. I mean, how do the numbers make sense if you're going to, you know, lose 25% for, you know, two, three, four months versus your uh, storefront being empty for several months while you wait for a new, a new tenant. And, you know, right now, um, the, the commercial real estate market is, is pretty flat. So there's not a lot of interest for new space or, or sales, but what we are seeing, and I think that's why the, the moratorium is so important is, you know, the majority of landlords are, are good. They care, they want to work with their tenants, they're offering the deferrals, um, but for those, tenant, uh, for those landlords who want an out or want to be able to break your lease or see that there's redevelopment value in the land, this is an opportunity for them to do that. And we've heard a few stories, uh, even here in the, the east end of Toronto, where a landlord has said, you know, well, you know, I'll apply for this, but that means, you know, you, you can't have a renewal after because I want to put this, you know, unit for fair market, or it's their opportunity to break a 10-year lease and get somebody new. So 
that's it, it's a numbers thing and so for some landlords uh they don't they they want the opportunity to evict their their tenant and that's where the moratorium is so important because it's it's just the wrong thing to do and that's probably some way that we depart uh, small cities and, and and bigger areas because uh, we were in we were in trouble before the pandemic struck and you know the the challenges from online the challenges from big box malls in historic shopping districts and there isn't uh, the ability in a place like downtown Guelph to uh, you know to build an 80 story condo so these things are are, are pressing here in a, in a different kind of way and we're saying there's not a there's not a whole parade of people lining up to take a take a vacant spot that becomes vacant because of this pandemic and a landlord's unwillingness to do something. Well, and Marty, Marty brings up a good point. I mean, that, that's been happening here in our city for years as the commercial realty taxes, which we know, I mean, in Ontario, it's all based on the value of the property. So if you have a property who's, which they're, the highest and best use is redevelopment, those taxes are based on that potential value of that property, not necessarily the use of the property. So these small businesses for, for several years have been, you know, squeezed out of some of these, these neighborhoods. I'm, uh, you know, the Church and Wellesley community, which we've, we've had, you know, meetings with uh, over the last few weeks. It's another community that has, you know, faced exactly that, where their local bars, community centers that are true to the, to the community have over time been, been pushed out because the property has been more valuable to redevelopment or to those larger establishments that can afford the rent and the taxes. And so, yes, this started way before, and this is now, um, you know, only exasperated some of those, those existing issues. Philip, could you just give us the numbers again, please, for those unable to pay the rent in, had trouble in April, May and June and what the forecast is for July based on the survey results. Right. Okay. So in April, we had 50% of uh, businesses not be able to make their full rent. In May, we had 63%. And this last month, currently for June, we're at 72% of businesses who couldn't uh, make all of their rent. And that number goes up to 78% uh, who feel they will not make all of July's rent. Thank you. And perhaps Marty or Mark, could you comment on that number in your respective cities as the number uh, from the survey who felt they might not be able to make next month's rent? I think it's pretty consistent. I think we're, we're, we're marching lockstep. Uh, Main Street businesses are, are, are about the same. I think uh, Philip was saying there's a, there's a small differential, but not, not much, nothing significant that's different in uh, big urban centers or small cities like ours. So small, small family businesses, uh, landlords who also are a landlord as a small family business are hurting in the province of Ontario that we need to be all in this together. And that means saving Main Street. And it means bringing in like other provinces have done. And even Alberta is contemplating a freeze on commercial evictions and get landlords to access the CECRA program and, as we've heard today, make it more user-friendly and easier to access. I'd like to thank all of our panelists here today. That would be MPP Peter Tavins, Toronto Danforth, uh, Philip Kosev from the Broadview Danforth BIA and the Treasurer and with iPro Realty, Marty Williams from the Downtown Wealth BIA and also with the Ontario Coalition of BIAs and Mark Kaluski from the Ottawa Coalition of BIAs and chairing the Vanier BIA. Thank you very much everyone for your participation today. And I look forward to joining you to celebrate a uh, ban on commercial evictions during this pandemic. Thanks so much. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.